Hey guys, Ty Bryson here, and here's a confession. In the beginning, I used to be obsessed with my credit score. I thought that my credit score told me how good I was with my finances overall. So obviously, kind of like a report card when you're in college, you know, you get a high GPA, you're like, okay, I'm doing great, things are good. But if you get a low GPA, you're kind of worried. Same thing with my credit score. When it was low, I was like, well, I must not be doing that good until I realized it's not really the same exact thing. It's actually the complete opposite, okay? So in this video, I'm actually gonna break everything down and the different stages of my credit score because for the most part guys when i was in my early 20s my credit score is basically 811 that's higher than the average like 70 year old person that had years to actually build their credit score so my credit score was high and i thought well i must be doing great but in reality I really wasn't. And now my credit score dropped to around 744. And you might say, Tommy, that's still pretty high, but that is still a big drop overall. And probably in the next year, I might not even have a credit score whatsoever. So that's why or what I'm actually going to break down in this video. So stick around to the end of this video. And maybe you might learn something about why is it that when you pay off debt, why is it if you close accounts that your credit score actually drops? And what is the exact reason and need to have a credit score overall. Now, make sure you actually like this video and top out also subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified. Now, the first thing guys I wanna break down is basically high credit scores. What exactly did it mean and what was it all about when I actually had a credit score of around 811, okay? Now, I think credit scores, as far as everything, they're pretty deceiving, okay? Because you might think that someone with a high credit score, they might be good financially, and someone with a low credit score, well, they might not be that great. And it's a definition of judging a book by its cover. Now, if someone has a terrible credit score, you'll probably tell they haven't been that financially savvy. But if someone has, for example, a high credit score, that doesn't tell you at all how good they actually are with their finances overall. Because here, Here's the entire picture I want to paint for you guys, okay? When I had a credit score of 811, well, guess what? I had around 16 different accounts open, and that involved a bunch of different credit cards, my student loan debt, and other loans that I actually had. So in total, I had around $40,000 worth of debt, I think a little bit more, and you would think, well, he has an 811 credit score, this guy must be good as far as finances, but overall, I had $40,000 worth of debt. That's pretty crazy. And on top of that also, guys, I had opportunities left and right. Banks kept offering me credit cards with limits of like over $20,000. So you would think that, hey, you have a high credit score. You have a lot of debt. But yet, banks are still offering you a bunch more money. Like, why does that work like that, okay? The answer is pretty simple. Your credit score is not a report card on your personal financial life. It doesn't show that picture. It doesn't show you that the person is basically struggling, living paycheck to paycheck, paying a mortgage, paying a car payment, paying all the stuff. They're like one missed check. If they don't get paid this month, everything goes up in flames. That's not what a credit card shows, okay? What it does show is basically how good is this person when it comes to managing debt overall or making payments on time. And lenders, well, they wanna use this information to know is this someone we actually wanna lend money to? You might have a lot of debt, but you're paying things off. You don't have that much of a high limit overall. So they might say, hey, based on this information, we're gonna lend you more money because we know you are we have a high likelihood that you're gonna continue to make these payments. That's what a credit score is for. A credit score, it just shows how good you are with debt. So the only way to maintain a credit score is by having some form of debt, whether it's a loan, whether it's a credit card, a car payment, a mortgage payment, student loans, these are all debts. And whenever you make a payment, it registers and shows, hey, this person borrowed money, keeps paying, they're responsible when it comes to paying off debt, but that does not mean you are financially healthy. And by the way, I was lucky, you know, that student loan debt, I had the cash, I didn't know if I wanna pay it off because interest is basically zero. I had another loan, I didn't know if I wanna pay it off because it was basically like not that much interest. So my situation really wasn't like, for example, I'm struggling like crazy, 
but my my credit score is showing something great? The answer is it wasn't that, but it was more like a personal decision. More on that later. Now, if someone told me that their credit score went from 811 to all the way down to 744, I would basically ask a few questions. I would be like, what did you do, right? Did you miss payments? What happened, right? Did you open up too many credit cards? Like, what's going on? You know, I would think that something bad actually happened. Did you borrow too much money? You know, but for the most part, that's not actually what happened to me. You know, most people would say like something bad must have happened, but what actually happened was, well, first I paid off all the debt I had. I closed all of my credit card accounts and now I only use debit cards. So I'm basically fully financially free. Well, not financially free, I should say. I am that, but I'm basically fully debt free. Okay. That's the idea. So it's actually a good thing. So from a financial point of view, my credit score might show, Hey, something's wrong here, but my actual financial life shows, Hey, I have no debt to worry about. I have no credit cards to worry about financially. I'm doing a lot better and I'm actually a lot healthier overall financially. That's my overall point. So you can't really just assume, for example, that again, well, credit score went down. That must be something bad. The answer is no. Remember what I told you guys before? The only way to maintain a credit score is by having debt. So whenever you close accounts, that affects your history, that affects the amount of accounts you actually have. It affects everything. So your credit score for lenders, that goes down, but that doesn't mean per se, you can never get a loan again. And I'm gonna talk about more about that later in this video. But overall, here are some of the consequences I face today by closing all of my accounts, by paying off all of my debt. The answer is, okay, a lot of the opportunities I had before, like credit cards offered me like $20,000 limits, those are basically gone because now it's like your credit score changed. You don't have this much history, you know? And I don't really care because I don't want a credit card. I don't plan on opening a credit card and I didn't need that money anyways. That's the whole idea. It's borrowed money. It wouldn't be my money anyways. It's not an opportunity for me. It's an opportunity for them to get a good borrower to keep paying them interest or whatever. Now, luckily, I never actually paid interest on a credit card, which I'm very lucky to actually say. Now, on top of that, guys, you know, next time when I go ahead to buy a home, because this is a very good, like, a very good question. Tommy, if you don't have, for example, any credit or history to report to your credit score, what's going to happen eventually? Because it dropped by to 774 now, but what's gonna happen eventually? Well, eventually, I probably won't even have a credit score anymore. Like within the next year or two years, there won't really be anything at all to track or to look at. So it's probably going to disappear overall. I'm gonna be credit invisible. So does that mean when you actually wanna buy a car or you wanna buy a house and you wanna borrow money to do those things? Well, are you going to be able to do that? The answer is yes. First of all, I wouldn't borrow money to buy a car. I would pay cash for it, buy the car I can afford to pay cash. But if I do find myself buying a house that I do need to borrow money, like a good financially savvy way to buy a home, you know, get a 15 year mortgage, no more than a third of monthly income on the mortgage, that's the whole idea, right? More on that in other videos that I have. But for the most part, if I have to borrow money, well, I go to the bank. And what do I show them if it's not my credit score, which I won't have anymore? The answer is I show them my pay stubs. I show them my income and they can see, for example, my rent payments, my water payments, my light bill payments, my phone bill payments. They can see all my payments and with that, they can build a financial profile for me. It's called manual underwriting, but the idea is they can see if I'm actually a good borrower or not. And based on information, the lender can give me the money, but I don't have to play the game of, I need to maintain a credit score in order to borrow money in the future. It's not true. But playing this game gets you in trouble because you're trying to keep this thing up when you don't realize it's costing you a bunch of money because you're getting into more debt and more debt, more opportunities, more debt, and so on and so on. It's just not worth playing this game anymore. And the biggest consequence is actually financial peace. You know, I don't have to worry about like, oh, this month I have to pay this or I owe this or I owe that. I don't have to worry about those things. Now, that took me a long time to actually do, because keep in mind, I got those loans at age 19. 
and I ended up paying them like at age 25. So don't think that when I talk, it's just like, well, you got lucky because you were able to pay these things off. And like, no, it took me a long time to make the decisions and to also get the money to do these things. So I'm not saying it's going to be overnight, but I'm saying it's still going to be 100% worth it. Guys, thanks for watching. If you're in a hole, stop digging. As always, like this video and top out. Also, if you're new here, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified. Up here is more content. Over here, my face. And as always, long-term team, officially out.